no purpose in this army. To do whatever you tell me, drill sergeant. Nuclear power plants across Japan are holding massive stockpiles of spent fuel while the government struggles with recycling methods. Now researchers say it's technically feasible to simply dispose of it as waste. What the fuck? Engineers at the Japan Atomic Energy Agency analyzed the possible environmental impact of burring spent fuel. The engineers made projections for fuel stored 1,000 meters below the surface. They say that over a time frame of one million years, radiation at ground level would be highest after 3,000 years, then subside. What the fuck? But they say even the peak would be considerably low. What the fuck? Government officials have planned two different recycling methods. The first is to extract plutonium from spent nuclear fuel, mix it with uranium, and produce MOX fuel. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. That byproduct could then be used for nuclear power generation. But a plant set up in northern Japan to reprocess spent fuel has yet to start full-fledged operations. The second method is to extract plutonium and use it in a fast breeder reactor. What the fuck? But a prototype facility built in central Japan is idle. It has faced technical problems and missed inspections. Nuclear facilities across the country have stored a combined 17,000 tons of spent fuel. The new method outlined in the report is the first from scientists involving treating spent fuel as a waste, not a resource. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Nuclear authorities are dealing with safety problems at another offline plant. The Monju fast breeder reactor is just three kilometers down the road from Tsuruga. Officials say the operator has failed to carry out safety checks. As a result, they are demanding that plants to, plans to restart the reactor be put on hold. Government officials inspected the Monju reactor last year. They found more than 9,800 missed checkups on equipment. The plant operator, Japan Atomic Energy Agency, later filed a report promising to improve safety procedures. But officials say the operator has yet to improve the situation. Meeting on Wednesday, the nuclear watchdog issued a harsh reprimand. <laughs> The real problem is that organizations like the Atomic Energy Agency still exist and are allowed to exist. NRA officials told the operator not to prepare for restarting the reactor until they can confirm the situation has improved. The officials say they will allow the Monju operator to respond before formally issuing the order. This, was likely, this will likely delay the reactor's restart until the end of next March. The head of the agency that operates the Monju Fast Breather Reactor has resigned. Officials at the Nuclear Authority said his organization had failed to carry out safety checks. Science and Technology Minister Hakobun Shimomura announced that Atsuyuki Suzuki will step down as president of the Japan Atomic Energy Agency, or JAEA. Shimomura said the operator's lax oversight was a breach of public trust. Government inspectors found JAEA failed to conduct more than 9,800 equipment inspections at the Munju reactor in central Japan last year. Shimomura said the ministry will select a successor. He pledged to work to regain public confidence. Now, Japanese leaders envisioned a future where they could sustain the country's energy needs with recycled fuel. They built the Mongju as a dream reactor that would generate more fuel than it consumed. Engineers started developing this type of reactor with the birth of Japan's nuclear program in the 1960s. Government leaders hoped to put the facility online by the early 1990s, but things didn't go according to plan. They pushed the deadline back each time they reviewed their nuclear policy. Finally, in 1994, the operator fired up the reactor. The following year, a sodium leak brought operations to a halt, and workers there continued to face problems. The operator put the facility back online in 2010, but during a test run, a fuel exchanger fell into the reactor vessel, and again the plant went offline. The people at Japan Atomic Energy Agency want to restart before next April. But regulators say the operator is unable to ensure the safety of the reactor 
They've ordered workers to stop preparations to restart it. The government has spent more than 18 billion dollars on the facility, but government officials believe Monju won't be able to resume full-scale operations until around 2050. The expert panel of Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority has confirmed the ground beneath the power plant is unstable. Panel members say a reactor on the Sea of Japan coast sits on an active fault, and they say it's at risk should an earthquake strike. NHK World's Takafumi Terui reports. The experts reached their conclusion at a meeting on Wednesday. The findings wrap up their seismological study on the Tsuruga plant. The question is whether the newly found fault is active or not. In the final analysis, we conclude that it's an active one. Government's guideline ban plant operators from building reactors directly above active faults. That means if the panel's findings are upheld, the reactor could be shut down for good. The plant is currently offline. Nuclear Regulation Authority commissioners say they will decide their next step on the reactor as early as next week. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, well you say there's no solution to the waste, but there is a solution to the waste, and the solution to the waste is to just leave it exactly where it is and to have somebody look at it for, for a million years, you know. So, so they just have to have all these zombies who are there at the moment sitting there doing nothing, who are going to just have to sit there and their children are going to sit there and their children's children and so on looking at the waste and making sure that it doesn't leak out of the tanks and if it starts to look like it's going to leak out of the tanks they build another tank around that tank and then they build another tank around the tank that they built around that tank and so on you know to infinity and that is a solution to the waste because then the waste will just stay where it is now and it won't get any worse and if they make more waste they'll have to put it inside that tank and leave it there and as far as contaminated land is concerned, and places like Sellafield and all that, they'll just have to put a fence around it and say, this is contaminated land, do not enter. And so that's the best we can do. I mean, it doesn't help to put it down a hole in the ground. I mean, you may as well put it somewhere where you can keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't escape. So that's the solution. And why not put a hole in the ground? Ah, well, because then if something goes wrong, you can't do anything about it. That's the point. And what could be could go wrong there. Well, God, well, loads of things could go wrong. I mean, the main thing that would go wrong is that it go, it's, it's a hole in, in the ground is not a secured depository, you know? I mean, you put it into a hole in the ground and then there's a crack in the hole in the ground or maybe there's a, an earthquake or, or maybe there's a fault that you didn't know about or maybe there's some water movement that, that changes over a period of time. And we're talking geological time scale, so, you know, just about everywhere where they've suggested putting it in a hole in the ground has had a geological um, fault occurring, you know, uh, in, in the last thousand years, never mind about, you know, the next million years or whatever it is it has for the half-life of these uraniums and plutoniums. So you can't, you can't actually guarantee that if you put it in a hole in the ground, something won't go wrong. And you can't pull it out of the hole in the ground, that's the point. I mean, the, the, the Forschmark idea is not one in which they put it down in the hole in the ground and then they can take it out if something goes wrong. They can't. They just pop it down and pop the next one down and pop the next one down and so on and send it all down there and then they seal it all up. But if something goes wrong, then they can't do anything. Whereas if it's where it is at the moment, at Sellafield or wherever it is, above ground or in some kind of big hangar or big kind of area where they kind of look at it, then they can look at it. And if something goes wrong, they've got all their detectors and their Geiger counters and whatnot, then they can just repackage it and put something around it. But they have to sit there. Yeah, they have to sit there forever. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Well, it serves them right, isn't it? Shouldn't have made it in the first place. And I've no doubt they'll pay them a lot of money for sitting there. <laughs> so yeah, they can sit there. And, and, I mean, maybe they should have special uniforms, like you know, guard of the nuclear waste, and they could have like special kind of green uniforms with special badges, like Superman or something. You know, that make them feel good. <laughs> I've always thought it quite good to have special uniforms. In all the science fiction stories, they did special uniforms, you know. So you could say, what's your daddy do? Oh, he's a god of the nuclear waste. Oh, no. <laughs> what a useful job, George. Yes, it is, isn't it? God damn it, Gump! You're a goddamn genius! 
university research team in Japan has developed a new model of drone plane that can fly indoors without using GPS. The drone will be used for inspecting the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. A Chiba University research group developed the unmanned plane. It's about one meter both in width and length and has six propellers. About ten firms, including Japanese electronics makers, cooperated in the project. Now, to fly indoors where GPS does not work, conventional drones had to have positioning information provided from outside by infrared or other rays. This new model has a sensor for figuring out its position and surroundings. It's designed to avoid obstacles on its own. Global competition is becoming intense for the drone market. Amazon and Google of the U.S. are among those that are developing unmanned planes. Japan changed the constitution to join the global drone arms race. Are they going to screw that up too? Are they going to destroy that injury? industry maybe they, japan will do something cool for the whole planet for a change and destroy the drone industry <laughs> if you're gonna if you really want to screw something up you get japan in on it they'll freak it up i guarantee you it won't be worth a nickel when they're finished with it long live japan <laughs> to the destroyer of the nuclear industry come on you can take down the drone industry while you're at it don't be a wimp that's the most outstanding answer I've ever heard. You must have a goddamn IQ of 160. You are goddamn gifted, Private Gump. You set the spark, you stoke the fire, and then you act surprised. When the flames go up, when the barn comes down right there before your eyes. Oh, the tools that you manipulate are more powerful each day. And they will overcome you They'll crush you and take from you All the marrow and the sinew of your ideology But don't get upset Don't be like that It's your own damn fault That your flock is ready to fight It is too late To turn around Turn them all to salt No your monsters come to life Oh Well rocks are thrown And voices used to tear down The innocent People will die with ideas Cast in rebar stoked cement Oh the words you shout Has moved the herd to break Free from their cage To drop bombs on all the weaklings Retching, melting, reeking of the forfeit tired teachings of your ideology But don't get upset, you can't be like that Cause it's your damn fault that your flock is ready to fight it is you